Hi guys, Mike from Real Clever here. Um, I just thought I'd take a quick look at Final Cut Pro's smooth cam option, uh, which basically makes footage that looks like this look a little bit better and look something like this. Um, it's really handy, it's often overlooked. Uh, you don't need to have wide sweeping uh, helicopter shots to benefit from it either. If we take a look at a clip, something like this. It's pretty good, but you could really impress a client by having it look like this. And it's real easy to do. All we're going to do is double click and bring it up into the viewer. Then come up to effects, uh, video filters, all the way down to video, and then smooth cam. Um, now what happens now is it sits here and processes it for a while. Uh, it can take quite a bit of time, and a word of warning, um, if you've got a clip that you've used Capture Now or is, is quite long, you may want to um, just crop to the size that you want the clip, just the bit that you want to be, um, to be smoothed, bring it into the timeline, set uh, in and out point, and then export to QuickTime Movie and then re-import it again. Uh, make sure you export to QuickTime Movie, not Compressor or QuickTime Conversion, as uh, that will retain the full quality. Um, basically, when it processes the video and finds all the little tracking markers, it'll do it to the entire clip, not just the marked in and out points. So um, definitely do that if it's going to take a long time. Um, so here's one that I prepared earlier. If we double click, we can take a look at the parameters of the filter. Um, basically all it's doing is it's just tracking different markers and then figuring out how they're moving and then it zooms in just a little bit and just basically shifts the frame around to keep it steady and rotates it to keep it steady as well. So you want auto scale to be on one. Um, if you bring it back out, it doesn't necessarily show in this clip but you'll start getting black frames around the edge uh, where it doesn't have enough room to move it around. So leave that on one for all intents and purposes. Translation smooth. Um, generally you can keep these two where they are. Uh, if you want a little bit more smoothing, you can move them to the right and move them up. Um, and if you want less smoothing, you can move them down. So if you don't want it to smooth the rotation, for instance, you can just bring it all the way to zero and just leave translation on 2.5 or, uh, or wherever. Scale smooth, I'm not entirely too sure what this does. I'm, I just leave it. <laughs> and um, and mix obviously is uh, the transparency of the effect. So generally you want to leave that on 100. Um, if we take a look at this one, we can see that uh, it's had to zoom in to smooth it to 116%. Now the more that you um, the more that you smooth it, the higher the percentage goes. So the more it has to zoom in on the frame, and the less quality you get out of your shot. So the general rule of thumb is that um, the shaker your footage is, then the less quality you're going to get after the smooth. And if you know that you're going to be correcting a shot with um, Final Cut Pro's smooth cam, then shoot with quite a fast shutter speed. Uh, you want to reduce motion blur as much as possible. And last but not least, you can use the effect stylistically. So here I've just got the standard footage and then 50% uh, opacity on top of it with the uh, filter applied and you can get this sort of drunken <laughs> drunken dreamy effect and you can even go further and start applying effects to this top layer um, shift the color hues and get get some things pretty wacky so that's about it from me um, use the filter you'll be surprised what it does it'll make your shots look a lot more professional and uh, don't forget to check out realclever.com